All right, number two, if I'm a local market, if I'm, if I am in a local market for lead gen and it's competitive, what is the best strategy for being the dominant player in that market 12 to 18 months from now? Is it just to muscle my way to the top for the primary search term? If so, what is the best way to do that? Or alternatively, alternatively, would you cast a wide net targeting relevant but less competitive keywords creating and posting one to two curated posts per day, one to two videos per day for 12 to 18 months? Well, um, if you're in a really competitive industry, then, you know, yeah, I mean, again, I, my, my first go-to strategy now is AdWords. Um, like right off the bat, I would start w w working my way in or muscling my way into the top of the AdWords, uh, you know, the, the, the ads pack, right? That's what I would be doing because again, if you're in, you know, the primary search term, if you already know this market and you know, the primary search term is generating, uh, has got money in it and you can determine that, which by the way, we should mention this for Vanita. One thing you can check to see which keywords are, um, you know, if you see a lot of people paying for ads, so a lot of advertisers for different types, for, for keywords that you're looking at, then you know that there's money in that niche, if that makes sense, or in those keywords, right? And so for Ben, <clears throat> excuse me, Ben, I would be working on AdWords, number one, because uh, I think that that's critical for any sort of local business, thing, uh, for lead gen especially now. Um, I think it's absolutely critical. But then I would be focusing on maps too, if possible. Now, I don't know your situation. I don't know if you have a physical location in this area that, you know, it's very difficult to, um, with just a small amount of text here to assume everything that's going on for your project specifically. But what I would say is maps for lead gen guys. I, you know, I've got uh, several dozen lead gen sites and I can tell you that the ones that were just using organic um, rankings for generating leads have tanked like not the rankings have tanked, my lead volume has tanked because there's just so much competition now between the ads and the maps three pack that it, you often have to go past seven damn listings to get to the first organic listing. And I've noticed for a lot of local terms now, guys, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but for a lot of the, the industries that I'm in or for the cities that I'm in, because I'm pretty much mainly in just a couple industries, I'm seeing a lot of more, a lot more directory sites listed on page one now in the organic section, right? I'm seeing a lot more of that. They're starting to muscle out the, uh, the, 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 you know, the little guys. And so because of that, like I said, I would recommend focusing specifically on maps if possible uh, for SEO. And I would, I would be focusing on AdWords and maps. Pretty much that's what I would be doing. Do you guys have any comment on that? Yeah, I think that would be, that would be the best way to go. Uh, plus you can have really quick, really quick iterations of, um, of, you know, your website, you know, if it's converting, like uh, the, the, the ability that will give you uh, paid advertising, once you have a proven, uh, a proven, uh, I would say a proven website, you know, you will be miles ahead of those that are just waiting for them to rank their websites or whatever, you know, because yeah. once you, let's say that you need to wait, I don't know, three months, for you to rank on the three pack or for you to rank on the, on, on, on the regular list things, whatever that is, then you have lost three months of potential input on your website. You know, right. that uh, you do not need to wait those three months. If you have uh, traffic coming in and then when SEO kicks in, then you will have like version two or version three of your website, et cetera, et cetera. So have that in mind as well. Yep. And the other part of this that I want to mention is, uh, the, the second part of this question or the last part of this question, when you say, would you cast a wide net targeting relevant, but less competitive keywords? Yes, I would do that anyways. My point is that if you're going, if you're in a competitive market, it's going to take an SEO strategy, time and patience in order to work your way into or muscle your way in, right? To like what you just mentioned. But what I'm saying is absolutely always target long tail um, and do that for use your blog. I mean, that's that's the whole IFTTT SEO strategy, guys, is to identify the top level keywords, then find supporting type keywords. Right. So the longer tailed versions of the keywords, LSI, co-occurring keyword type things, reinforcing supporting keywords that are generally going to be longer tail in nature. And then start blogging using those keywords, uh, blog, creating blog posts, whether they're original or curated content, covering those topics, using those longer tail keyword phrases as the primary topic of the post, put up, build silo structure into your site and continuously blog on a consistent and regular basis. And you will start to muscle your way into that top level term. 
and you use the blog as your way to build that relevancy and backlinks, starting with just distributing content that's relevant within a proper silo structure. So I absolutely recommend that you do that anyways. For any SEO strategy, you should be doing that. Why go after the top level term that's going to take you months of effort um, and when you can start going after longer tail stuff and get traction a hell of a lot quicker, which will also reinforce your efforts to work on that to, to uh, you know, your, your efforts to try to rank for the top level term, if that makes sense. So, I mean, guys, I used to go after just the top level terms all the time, but you know, over time I realized that that was a ass backwards strategy. You know, I should be going after the low hanging fruit first to initially get some traction, start generating some leads and thus revenue and then reinvest and continually work on trying to rank for those top level terms where the real money is. But in the meantime, I can start generating revenue, especially for lead gen, right? I can start selling those leads, whether they came from a long tail search or top level search. It doesn't matter. It's a lead is a lead is a lead, right? And so again, for that, just just one, I, I want to uh, point this out one time. But we talk about this tool all the time. Power Suggest Pro has got to be my favorite keyword tool of all time, guys, for SEO. Okay, for AdWords, I just use the Keyword Planner. But uh, but for SEO, the Power Suggest Pro is probably the greatest keyword research tool of of all time, in my opinion. And it's inexpensive. It's like fifty seven bucks one time, and it's a super simple tool. It doesn't have a learning curve at all. All you do is post your punch your main keywords in there. Select Google if you're going to be targeting Google. You can uncheck YouTube. And then click search and it will start spitting out the suggested auto suggest keywords very, very quickly. And you'll get all the long tail ideas that you need for your content marketing right there. Does that make sense? It will give you gold that you can use really long tail stuff. A lot of the times will uh, power suggest will return really long tail terms sometimes that are absolute gold because there's traffic there and you can build relevancy within a silo to help rank a top level term. Okay. I, I added the link. Okay. Thanks.